Hi there, my name is Mrs. Ruby and I am the assistant director here at Core Butte High School. And as we get ready for course planning for the 2021-2022 school year, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about the options and opportunities that our students have available to them after high school and then also while they're here in high school. I've been giving these presentations during homerooms and um, to parents during some of our parent meetings, but for those of you who weren't able to make it to those meetings, I hope that you take some time to watch this recorded version of the presentation. When I meet with students, I always ask them this question, what are your goals after high school? And I feel like this question is extremely important because an answer to this question is going to then lead into thinking about how the classes that you take while you're in high school and the work that you do while you're in those classes can help you reach the goals that you have. Some of our students they are thinking about what they want to do after high school and they have a really solid idea of what that plan looks like. Other students are really overwhelmed and they're not even ready to start thinking about after high school and some students are all over the place. They have five or six different ideas for what the future looks like for them and they're not quite sure how to narrow down those options and to make a decision and um, a path moving forward. No matter where you're at, I always encourage students to identify their interests, their strengths, and their lifestyle preferences. By interests, I mean, students, what are the things that you enjoy doing? What classes do you enjoy taking outside of school? What do you do for fun? Are you a people person? Do you like building? Do you like playing with numbers? Do you like creating new things? Knowing your interests can really help you narrow down a path, a career path that's going to be meaningful to you. With strengths, that's respect to what are you good at and what are the things that you enjoy doing to challenge yourself so you can continue to grow in those areas. And by lifestyle preferences, I mean, when you imagine yourself in the future, do you see yourself living in rural Northern California like we are now? Do you see yourself living in a big urban area? Do you like to travel? Do you like living by the ocean or do you see yourself living by the ocean? Um, do you see yourself living in a big house? Knowing those sorts of preferences that you have for yourself and those um, preferences that you have for your future can again start to lead to possible career options. There are lots and lots of options for students after high school, and I'm going to talk about four in this presentation today, but understanding those different types of options and then also recognizing that each of those options has different preparations and different admissions requirements, um, it's going to help you ensure that the path that you take in high school and the decisions that you make now are going to lead you to where you want to be when you graduate. If you're in that category where you really are not sure what you want to do for the future or you're still interested in career exploration, even if you have a pretty solid idea of what career path you may want to go into, um, I have four different resources here for you to take a look at. The first one is a recommendation to take the ASVAB. We are offering it this semester on February 26th. Signups are going out in the weekly update. We usually offer it once a year. So if you're not ready to take it this semester, think about it for next year. We'll offer it either in the fall or the spring. Um, the ASVAB is a career test that was created originally by the military to help people who enlisted determine a career pathway within that branch of service. But it's such a solid, comprehensive exam that measures people's strengths and appetite aptitudes in eight different areas that it's been adopted by a lot of private organizations and education institutions. And so we offer a version of the ASVAB called the Career Exploration Program or CEP. So take a look at that opportunity and that might be one good way to start to explore some um, career opportunities that match up with your strengths. The other three sources on there are free internet-based resources, College Board's Career Finder, ONET Online, and California Career Zone. All work similarly in that they give 
people an opportunity to look at um, what career fields there that are out there. You can um, type in a career field like engineering, for example, and compare different types of engineers. You can take a look at what it looks like a day in a life and a person in a particular field. You can take inventories about um, or assessments on your strengths and your interests, and then they can give you some ideas of possible career paths that might match up. And the more exploration, the more research you do on possible careers is a really great way to start narrowing down um, what your future might look like and start to give some guidance and direction to what your future might look like. After high school, there are typically four pathways that um, students fall into. And the first pathway or the first option to consider after high school is to go to a four-year university. There are over 3,600 colleges and universities nationwide. Um, these colleges and universities uh, vary in size, they vary in cost of attendance, they vary in the academic programs that are available. And beginning to research different colleges can can really help determine um, which school is going to best suit you as you look ahead to career possibilities. I have listed there three great websites to check out and that on each of those sites you can search individual colleges or you can also um, put in parameters to your search field by geography based on academic program, based on extracurricular activities, based on people groups you might want to go to school with, the more research you do for colleges, similar to more the more research you do for careers, is going to help you as you plan for the future. In California, we have two public university systems, which is very unique to our state. We have 34 public universities, and public universities are typically um, more attractive to graduates because they tend to be less expensive than private universities. The two public university systems in California are the CSU and the UC. CSU stands for California State University, and students who attend CSUs um, are looking to receive the academic training that they need to go immediately into a career after graduation. CSUs are going to look at students' A to G coursework while they're in high school and the grades that they earned in those classes. Um, CSUs aren't going to consider extracurricular activity. And one thing that's really nice about the CSU system is they give priority admission to students in their local service area. Our local service area um, university is Chico State, and that means that as long as students have taken the required A to G coursework and earned a minimum 2.0 GPA, they're guaranteed admission into Chico State. Chico State is an outstanding university. It has a lot of incredible academic programs and opportunities for students, and for some, it's a great fit, and knowing that it's a somewhat seamless transition from high school to college can really take any sense of feeling anxious or overwhelmed by the college decision making process um, off the table. So consider CSU Chico as a possibility for college. The other public university system in California is the UC. There are 10 campuses up and down the state. Um, UC Davis is our nearest UC campus. UCs, they are going to be campuses focused on research. So students who attend UCs are um, typically students that are looking to have a, a depth of knowledge in a particular subject area. Also, graduates of UCs often go on to complete their master's degrees or their doctoral programs because the careers that they're aspiring to go into require that type of education, that level of education. UC applicants are also going to need to complete A to G coursework while they're here in high school. And UCs are gonna look at 14 different criteria for admission, including extracurricular activity, leadership, community service, uh, letters of recommendation, and essays. The minimum GPA for UCs is 3.0. 
The second pathway for students after graduation to consider is community college. And Butte College is our local community college right down the street. There are typically three main reasons why students choose to go to a community college. The first is because they're looking to enter into a certificate program. And certificate programs are usually um, career training programs and they offer short-term coursework that is going to enable students to enter immediately into that occupation after completing that certificate. Certificate programs in cosmetology or um, automotive, those are examples of certificate programs available at Butte. The welding certificate is a very popular one as well. The second community college option is to pursue an associate's degree, and an associate's degree um, is a combination of the career training courses that a student needs to go into that field, as well as courses in general education, so diving deeper into those academic subjects that students have studied in high school, um, but exploring them on a deeper level. An example of um, a, a career field that might necessitate an associate's degree would be firefighters. A lot of times firefighters, um, they will complete an associate's degree in fire science to go along with their fire academy certificate completion. And a degree in fire science is going to have the components of specified coursework in fire science. So they learn about the statistics of fires. They learn about the history of wildfires and um, look into why we have more wildfires in our state now than we have had historically. Um, they're going to look at the science of the best ways to fight fires and then also diving deeper into those general ed courses. And then the third reason why students might or why people might pursue community college um, is because they are planning to eventually transfer onto a four year university and people may have started a, a community college because um, they didn't um, gain the academic foundation that they needed while in high school, or maybe their grades weren't high enough while they were in high school, or they just don't quite feel ready to enter a four year university or perhaps financially, it just makes more sense for them to complete part of their degree at a community college and then transfer on to a four-year university. But ultimately their goal is to finish their Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree at a four-year university. There are transfer agreement programs established between community colleges and four-year universities. And so I really encourage students to meet with an academic advisor at a community college every semester to make sure that the classes you're taking are going to lead you to wherever you're wanting to go educationally, whether it be the certificate program, an associate's degree, or a transfer to a four-year university. For community colleges, there are minimum admission requirements. Um, you need to be 18 years old or a high school graduate. They're not going to look at the SAT or the ACT. There's a lot of financial aid available to support students with all levels of higher education, um, but a really enticing program right now is the California Promise Program, which is a grant that most students in California are eligible for and offers two years of free tuition to first time students. I mentioned Butte being our local community college, but know that it's not the only one. Um, locally, we have Yuba College and Shasta College, which are both outstanding community colleges. There are 116 community colleges up and down the state and over 1,100 nationwide. So I encourage you to research those options um, and choose one that's going to be best for you. The third pathway that people consider after graduation are CTE programs or career technical education. And I mentioned a few that Butte College has through their certificate programs, but we're also very fortunate in Butte County through our Office of Education to offer additional CTE programs. And these CTE programs are short-term programs that are going to give graduates highly skilled training so they can enter into career fields um, that are going to be higher paying, that are going to be likely more satisfying than those minimum wage occupations that, um, that people can get with just a high school diploma. CTE careers include auto, techn auto technicians, electricians, carpenters, um, hairstylists, 
There are the Butte County Office of Education has a really popular vet tech program, a phlebotomy program, medical assistant, dental assistant. So consider these as an option as you're looking at possibilities after graduation. And then the fourth option is military. A lot of people don't often realize that there are actually five branches of service to our US military. And each of those branches of service has a very specialized area that they focus on. And so researching those branches of service to know exactly what that branch does and the type of career that you would have within um, that branch of service is really important. There are lots of benefits to going into the military, just as there are to pursuing other forms of education and other occupations, other career goals. I've listed just a few here. Um, there are education benefits. There is a guaranteed paycheck with cash bonuses, tax-free room and board, opportunity to travel. So um, if you're thinking about the military, by all means, look into those branches of service. So once you know about those four primary options after graduation, it's important to think about what you're going to do while you're here in high school to make sure you're taking the right steps to prepare you to keep the doors open for those options post-graduation. While you're here in high school, you're working towards completing your grad requirements and your graduation requirements are determined by the state of California. And our state has said, these are the courses we wanna make sure that our um, high school graduates have completed when they finish high school and they're ready to enter into the adult world. On top of graduation requirements, there are what's called the A to G requirements. And these are the minimum classes that you need to take while you're in high school to be eligible to apply to four-year universities for freshman status, universities like UCs and CSUs. Knowing what these classes are, graduation requirements and A to G requirements is really important. So that way you know that you're on track and you have a plan as you work through high school. This slide shows our graduation requirements. Um, this is a snapshot of how students progress through high school, four years of English, um, one year of algebra, um, a year of visual and performing arts or a foreign language. And then with, uh, beyond those academic courses that students are taking, there's also a requirement that students take 55 credits of electives. And that's really an area where it opens the doors. Um, it provides a lot of opportunity to explore a range of different fields that hopefully can help students spark their interests, spark um, some ideas for career possibilities down the road. Those A to G requirements um, are here on this slide. These are the 14 courses that you need to take while you're in high school to meet minimum eligibility of eligibility for college admission. Um, a few differences between high school graduation requirements and A to G requirements. You need to take two years of the same foreign language and a visual and performing arts. You need to make sure that you're taking more science and more math. And one of your electives is a college prep elective. This is a transcript. Um, hopefully you're familiar with this document, but a transcript is an official academic record that keeps track of the classes that you've taken, the grades and the credits that you've earned in those classes. Students, you can access your transcript through your student um, uh, through your student portal, and you can access it by um, going into your academic records. And you can make sure that you are um, on track for graduation and on track for meeting your A to G requirements as well. So when it comes to choosing classes, you of course have the option to take classes here at the center. Those are those select classes that we offer by um, a, a teacher who's guiding instruction and guiding you through the year. And in addition to that, you also have the option to take independent study classes. Um, you can take a class that's textbook based or through one of our online programs that we partner with. But knowing about those options um, and knowing that you have the flexibility um, and more opportunities options beyond just what's here at the center um, can really help you to ensure that you're creating a course plan that is, um, is right for you. And it's going to make sure that you are as successful as you want to be academically and you're exploring those courses that are really of interest to you. 
Beyond the classes that we offer through Core Butte, either at the center or through independent study, you also have the option to pursue concurrent enrollment. And concurrent enrollment is where you take a class at Butte College or Chico State while you're still in high school. And there's lots of benefits to that. Um, we are a small school and so we're limited with the number of courses that we can offer here on our campus. Um, and through independent study, you don't always get the same hands-on experiences, but with Butte College, you can explore a myriad of different subject areas um, beyond just what we can offer here at our campus. You can, of course, take academic courses like English, math, science, and history, but you can also explore other things like um, jujitsu, art history, marine biology, uh, welding, things that we just don't offer here on our campus. Get a jump start on some college courses if you're thinking about um, going on to a four-year university or if you're looking to start on a, a CTE program. The, some other benefits, you can earn college credit and high school credit simultaneously. Gives you college experience and confidence in yourself as a student. And, hey, if I can be successful in one college class, maybe I can be successful as a full-time college student. And maybe if you hadn't thought that college was for you, this might open the doors to give you the confidence to pursue that or consider that as an option. You can complete a year of a, a high school class in a single semester. So for students who are looking to graduate early or again, get a jump start on some of their college coursework, that's really enticing. And then taking a college class is a boost to your GPA. And then the last option uh, while you're here in high school is to consider one of our career technical education or CTE pathways. We offer five CTE pathways in three industries, the medical or healthcare pathway, the technology pathway, and, and two agriculture pathways. And the purpose, the reason why we encourage students to look into CTE pathways um, is because those classes are career focused. Um, they are intended to help students gain exposure and learn skills needed for a career in those industries, while also determining if that path that you're interested in is really for you, if that's really something that you want to invest the time and the money in um, as you look to higher education and look to a career in the future. So looking ahead, um, in the next week or so, you're going to be meeting with um, your PLT. Parents and students are going to be meeting with a PLT to talk about um, establishing a schedule for next school year. And my hope is that as you look ahead to course planning, your conversation really stays centered on that question that I asked at the beginning. What are your goals for the future? Um, and then once you can establish those goals and you have some ideas in mind for what your future might look like, then putting in those classes are going to fit right in um, and it'll all start to come together. So some food for thought as we wrap up, the path that you take in education should really be influenced by your future ambitions. Again, this is kind of like a puzzle. Um, the, and the classes that you take and the work that you do in those classes are the pieces of those puzzles all coming together to lead to what your future is gonna look like. I'm not um, saying that today you need to know exactly what your career path is gonna look like, and that's not realistic. Your career path is gonna change, it's going to evolve, it's gonna be dynamic. But if you stay focused on pursuing your strengths, pursuing your passions um, and your interests and your lifestyle preferences, the right career for you is going to follow, it's going to come along. Pursuing education here in high school and then beyond um, is really a journey of exploration. It's figuring out who you are as a person, what your gifts are, and um, what you're intended to do in your adult life. So really embrace the ride, and I hope that you make the most out of your years in high school and beyond. If you have any questions about um, your options after high school or planning for courses, please don't hesitate to reach out for me. My email address is there. Um, if you're on campus, my office is right behind Lisa. If you're not on campus, I'm always happy to talk via Zoom or email or text or phone, whatever works for you. Um, but I hope that you do well, um, are doing well, and that uh, you enjoy the next few weeks as you start looking ahead for course planning for next year. Have a great day.